All right, so today we're gonna to talk about cards and I'm gonna show you exactly how you can apply different colors in aesthetics such as glass morphism, when should you use strokes, when shouldn't you, should you use outer glows. We're gonna take a look at cards in a lot of different contexts, so let's get started. So this first one, you'll see is, I wouldn't call this a card because there's nothing encapsulating it, all right? So in this context, it's just a layout, but to make it a card, we need to make it physically kind of encapsulated in some type of, you know, container. So the simplest and quickest way to do this, if you had a white background, is simply just to darken the background slightly and leave the card white, just like this. All right, this is a, a modern approach to card design. And for some reason, newbies to UI and UX design think that they have to add a bunch of effects to their cards and it just almost always looks like crap. Minimalism is typically the best. So this is very simple. You can't go wrong with it. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. You can also use white on any colored background. All right, it'll always work. That's one of the fundamentals of color and contrast that you'll, you'll quickly learn about. Just making your card white with text that's you know dark inside of it that contrasts well works perfectly fine. So let's go back to our flat background color only, and let's see what else we can add to this. Here's an example of just the same card, except we removed the background. So now the background of the card is transparent, and we gave it a stroke. This works completely fine. So you could do this. You could also do this if you wanted to. You could also do this. You can add a white background with a stroke, a high contrast black stroke. That's fine. In fact, I, th that's been a trend recently where you have a thick black dark stroke around your cards and that's okay. Um, you could also reduce the opacity of the stroke. As you can see here, this works fine as well. Again, we're not breaking any rules. Everything's working well. The, the focus is on the content. That's the most important thing to remember. Type, uh, when it comes to typographic visual hierarchy and visual hierarchy in general, the elements that people need to read, they need to really stand out and contrast well. So here's an example of a background with hard shadow. So now we're gonna talk about when does it make sense to use a shadow? Um, so in this context, I say this is a bad usage of a sat shadow because it's too high contrast. If I zoom up and we'll see right around here, this is really dark and it distracts from the important content inside of the card. You want your shadows to be an afterthought. You don't want it to be a main discussion piece. All right, so doing this instead, reducing that opacity, thus the contrast is gonna make it a lot, lot better. You want it to be an afterthought. This is also, if you uh, try to add a soft shadow, same thing here. You don't wanna have these large, high contrast soft shadows. Over here, you can barely even tell it's applied, but it is. Now here's an example of a hard and soft shadow over here on the right. So this is just the big soft shadow, not high contrast at all, but you can actually, through Figma and CSS itself, you can stack shadows. So there's a large shadow, a drop shadow right, you know, extending out here pretty far, but then we also have a closer one right here as well. And that's fine as well, I have no problem with that. Now let's talk about cards on textured backgrounds. This card fails because this background right here has too much contrast and variation in the contrast. And therefore, if you look over here, you could barely see this progress, uh, the remaining bits of this progress bar. It could also be a little bit distracting trying to read paragraphs uh, or even a sentence of type when you have a lot of variation in the background. So for instance, if you really want this background or your client really wants this background or a boss or whatever, then you say, okay, we can have this background, but if we have in type, you know, important typographic information on top, either icons and text, then we need to lighten it. And all we did is just add, you know, a rectangle with some opacity on it. And now it's a thousand times easier to read and digest as compared to this one over here. So this also applies for a dark background. This is the same image, except we made it dark. And you could also see, you know, these, these both work. You know, you have options in terms of how you style your cards. It's just like, I'm gonna hammer this home a million times. You need to make sure your type is readable and they are readable in both of these contexts. Um, now let's talk about 
colored glows or colored drop shadows. I see this often. And in fact, the reason I made this video is because I saw a fellow student do cards like this. And when it comes to like a dark background and you have like a colored drop shadow, it almost is always gonna look not good because these colors and the variations, they start to not mix well and contrast well with the grays and the dark, the dark, you know, background, essentially, you can get away with this. If you have a white colored background with white cards, check this out. I love, this is a, a great aesthetic. It's been out for a few years. We've done this, you know, people do this sometimes, um, both of these pass the test, but look, if you take a look at this, you know, this is pure white. So is this, the card background. The reason we see a card is because we gave it a really soft, and this could be completely gray, but we chose to color it and it will work well. Over here, this is like a purple, and we accent it with purple in some of the type uh, in the card itself. Both of these work well. Now let's take a look at glass morphism, which we haven't talked about yet, but it's perfectly, uh, it's actually great to use glass morphism if you have a photograph based background. Um, you don't have to, but it's an option. And as long as you can still see this type, like I'm mentioning, beating a dead horse here, um, it's good to go. So both of these pass. Here's another example of glass morphism in a different context with darker cards. You can add a stroke around it if you want. Again, a lot of this is subjective and you have creative freedom. Um, over here, there's no stroke. They both work. Here's one with a gradient stroke, which yes, you can achieve obviously within Figma, but also CSS is a little bit more difficult, but there's just different stylings and colors of gradient based strokes. Over here, we don't even have a card background color. We just have this, this gradient sort of um, stroke that's occurring here. And we can kind of see, you know, that it's a part of a card because we've outlined it. So it's very minimal, but it works well. Here's another example. Now, these are just random cards styled differently in different contexts. And we'll take a look at a few of these. Um, you know, here we have pretty vibrant background color here. Glass morphism works, just making it white works or making the card black works as well. All right, so here's a blue background, a pretty vibrant blue background. And I'm gonna show you, I think there's about nine different card aesthetics that will work well with this blue background. So obviously we have, uh, you could call this glass morphism, but really it's not because it's there's nothing happening in the background. It's just a lighter shade of the, the background it's sitting on. I personally love this approach and it's what I use. If you ever use Discord, you'll see a lot of the UI elements and the columns, you know, they're only slight shades of difference between each other. We can also make it darker. We made it lighter here. Here's no color with a stroke, this works well. And we could also choose colors that work well with this background. These two colors work great. I have no problem with this. Now on the next slide is gonna be scary because we're gonna choose some colors with this same background that do not work well. None of these are great. The green one is probably the best because the contrast, the color contrast is, is distinct. But still, these two colors, I don't really like them together. This purple one is way harder to see um, just because of the colors and how they're contrasting with each other. And then this red one hurts your eyeballs. <laughs> so here's the mind boggling thing about this. We could keep, I'm going to keep all these three cards, the same exact color. I'm not going to change one thing about them. However, I will change this background. It's going to be the same color, but we're going to make it darker and watch how much better these look. Now they are a lot better looking. You could use this. Now I would advise against using a red background for a card, unless it's like a real important danger item or something. Um, but this just give you some ideas of how you can apply these. So if we go all the way back to the beginning, you could see you have so many options and there's, there's very few don'ts. There's a lot of things that you can do though, as you could see, and if you paid attention and follow along, throughout this whole video, you should now have a solid idea of how you can kind of construct your cards and cards, you know, cards are used in almost every design layout that you create. So understanding how to apply these different aesthetics is really important. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to subscribe and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.